Hello YouTube, welcome to my workbench. Today I'm conducting an experiment to see how clamping pressure affects the strength of wood glue joints. I've always heard that when clamping a joint it should be tight but not so tight as to squeeze all the glue out. That's way too vague of an answer for me. I've always wondered how tight is tight enough, how tight does it have to be to squeeze all the glue out, and is it even possible? Today, I hope to answer those questions. If you want to skip ahead to the fun part, it starts at the time shown at the top of the screen. If you are too lazy to skip ahead and don't want to listen to my description of how the experiment will be done, I have my kinetic desk toy off to the right to entertain you. For this experiment, I will be gluing uh, six inch long red oak one by twos together at a right angle, half inch from the end. This leaves a 1.5 inch by 1.5 inch square glue surface, which is 2.5 square inches. For those new to woodworking, a 1 by 2 is generally really 3 quarters of an inch by 1 and a half inches. The maximum force I can, I can apply to the glue joint is about 3,100 pounds, which means a clamping pressure of about 1,400 psi. So I'm going to glue three samples at each of eight different clamping pressures ranging from about 1.2 to 1400 PSI. So here is the equipment I'm using. I'm starting here with my clamping jig. Now this is created so I can keep all the wood held together in a consistent manner without sliding around like uh, glue joints tend to do. <coughs> So I have this piece in here against these uh, <clears throat> metal dowel pins. And I use that wedge to hold that uh, in tight. Then I take the next one and put it on top and use this wedge here to glue that in or to hold that in tight. Now for the clamping force, I'll be using either gravity or one of these three air cylinders here. Um, for gravity, I have some weights I'll be stacking on there. And for those low pressures, uh, this air cylinder here would, would only need a fraction of a PSI, and you can't be accurate with that low pressure. It takes at least two and a half PSI just, just to get this uh, cylinder to move. It takes about four and a half PSI to get this one to move. Um, so you need, uh, you need to use high forces, high, high pressures to be accurate. Okay, the glue, as you see, there is tight bond three. An air booster, similar to this one, is used to get the air pressure up to the required pressure for the cylinders that are rated at 250 PSI. To allow the pressure to slowly rise, a three gallon air tank is connected between the compressor and the air cylinders. A typical air gun like this one is used for quick shut off of the air from the compressor when the clamping pressure is reached or the glue joint breaks. The relatively large air tank helps keep the airflow slow enough to stop the pressure rise quickly. The tank also keeps the pressure from dropping significantly when the cylinder suddenly extends after the joint breaks. So the air cylinders I will be using are uh, this four inch uh, bore, a two inch bore, and this one and one eighth inch bore Fabco pancake air cylinders. So I'll be clamping the glue joints for approximately one hour and after that uh, each joint has been clamped for that time I will uh, wait a minimum of 24 hours for each of them to to cure fully and then we'll, we'll use the, the rig the same uh, press here to uh, to break those glue joints. So let me move this air cylinder out of the way. So this is to help hold the uh, the wood in place while we try and while we uh, use the air cylinder to break the glue joint. It'll be sitting here in here like this. So let me show you how that's set up. Alright, 
So that goes in there like that. And then to, to also to aid in the uh, keeping the keeping the wood steady in this joint, you take this piece off here. All right, so we, we slide this in to the slot in the top board and it slides down into the slot in the bottom one. Then we'll take this one and we'll uh, secure it back on there. And of course we bolt it up tight if we were going to break the glue joint. And then the uh, air cylinder here will come down and uh, will increase the pressure slowly until it breaks.
Well, I found that quite interesting. It seems the answer to the question, how much clamping pressure do you need for a strong glue joint is not very much. Of course, if you don't have a glue joint that fits well, it's, uh, you're not going to get a strong joint no matter what clamping pressure you use. But if the glue joint fits well, you don't need very much pressure at all. I wouldn't even say you need to be tight. I would just say snug would be the clamping pressure. I would the term I'd use for the clamping pressure. Um, again, of course, still a vague term, but 1.2 PSI is certainly not very much. And I was quite impressed with how strong it was. This took quite a bit of force to break. I think the red oak is a good part of that. I ran some tests on a couple of scrap pieces of Baltic birch I had laying around before I did the oak, and the Baltic birch broke at a much lower pressure than these did. One of them that seemed out of place was the 3.3B. It's the, the red diamond in the graph here. That seemed quite a bit lower than you'd expect based on the trend in the rest of the graph. I'll include some close-up pictures of all sides of that piece at the end of the video here so you can see if there's anything odd about it. I didn't really notice anything. It's clear you need a lot more than just three pieces to get a good average, I think, when it comes to wood. Um, although these numbers aren't too ridiculous. Also, I think if I would have taken more time to, to select my wood more carefully and be, had the more consistent selection of, of grain straightness and how tight the grain was on the wood, it might uh, have given me more consistent results also. One of the reasons I chose red oak was because red oak has a fairly open grain pattern and I thought that it would soak up the, the glue much better than, than a wood with a tighter grain pattern might have. So I suspect if you were to do this with maple, I think that its strength of the joint would drop off much more dramatically at the end, at the high pressures, than, uh, than the oak did. But in the case of oak, it doesn't look like you can squeeze it tight enough to get the, all the glue out of the joint. Because even at that 1400 PSI, it still came out fairly strong, although that seems to be clearly a little bit weaker on that, those than the other ones were. And of course the 25 PSI seems to definitely been the winner in this case right there in the middle and again that's not very much pressure anyway I find this quite interesting I guess we'll wrap that up until next video have a good day